fourth generation big cat tracker Boone Smith has worked in the harshest conditions imaginable, tracking the most elusive cats on the planet. But now he has a new mission that will bring us closer to the action than ever before. All my life, I've dreamed of being in the middle of wild lions and their kill. Just to see what these guys are truly capable of. This could be my big chance. If it stays in one piece. Over the next hour, I'll break down each stage of a lion's kill so I can prepare for the ultimate test. Locking myself inside a specially engineered four by seven foot clear acrylic box. Inches from wild lions. We'll find out exactly what makes the African lion reign supreme. From the initial stalking strategy to their high speed pursuit and their astounding leap their powerful takedowns, and finally, the feast. Welcome to the Nambiti Game Reserve. Deep in the heart of Zululand, South Africa. Here, 22,000 acres of rugged terrain are a battleground for over 40 species of game. But within the constant fight for survival, there is one predator that has evolved and fine-tuned its hunting ability to become one of the most feared warriors in the land. The African Lion. There's seven lions here on this reserve. I've been tracking three of them all morning. Their tracks are right here. That big track right there, that's Big and Dada. He's the dominant male, and he's just over the edge right here. Just down the hill from him are his two younger brothers, Blondie and Mohawk. These three are known as the Nambiti brothers. You can hear him right there. That's Big and Dada, and he's calling. There's a new female in the area, and I got a hunch that's who he's trying to find. It's clear that right now, Big and Dada is the dominant male. But Mohawk, as I've sized him up, you can see he's going to be a big cat. And really soon, he's going to challenge to be the dominant male here as well. Lions are unique amongst all big cats because they form dynamic social groups. The most well-known form is the pride, usually consisting of multiple females, their cubs, and an alpha male. While the females of the pride usually do most of the hunting, the male's role is that of protector and patriarch. To maintain his status, the alpha male must continuously assert his dominance over any challenger. He exiles maturing males from the pride, and those lions will sometimes band together to form what is called a coalition. Together, they can become one of the most fearsome forces in the African bush. The Nambiti brothers are exactly that. They watch each other's backs and work as a team to survive. Now, their long-standing bond will be put to the test. With a new female in the area, competition for mating rights will be fierce. But until that day comes, our brothers will continue to hunt together. And as night falls, their hunger grows. Lions can make kills during the day, but they're way more active at night. They take advantage of the cooler temperatures and the cover of darkness to stalk their prey. 
Tonight, we'll track the Nampiti brothers from the sky, cutting through the darkness to give you an extraordinary view of their attack strategy. This is the first stage of a lion's kill, the stalk. To track these guys' nocturnal behavior, we'll deploy this. A drone equipped with military-grade flare thermal imaging. Not only will we have our eye in the sky, but we'll also have clear thermal imaging on the ground. And hopefully, we'll be able to capture some of their hunting strategies. We know the brothers are in the area, so we're going to track them down and see if the hunt is on. With our bird in the air, it's like we're switching on a light, revealing the battleground that exists in the dead of night. But while we rely on cutting-edge technology for our night vision, the lions rely on their sophisticated adaptations. A strip of white fur underneath the eye helps reflect extra moonlight into the lens. There's also a mirror-like membrane at the back of each eye that reflects light into a high concentration of rod cells in their retina. This means the light coming into their eyes is magnified when exposed to the retina, allowing them to see in the dark, giving the coalition a real edge over their prey. Hey, there they are. I got them. The two younger brothers. Oh, there's three. There's three. There's a third one. They just joined up with Big and Dada. They're heading right up this hill, uh, what looks like a herd of wildebeest, I think. Lions use highly developed teamwork when they hunt. Spreading out, each lion takes a position for a strategic attack. Blondie takes the high ground, while Mohawk closes in on the opposite side of the herd. Team leader Big and Dada will lead the charge down the middle with the two brothers flanking. It appears their plan is to scatter the herd, allowing them to pinpoint an individual. Big and Dada springs into action. He runs straight at the center of the herd. The plan appears to be working as the three wildebeest break away from the group. But their success is not long-lived. The prey manages to regroup and outrun the brothers. The sun's coming up in about an hour, but these guys are definitely in hunting mode. So we're going to see if we can keep up with them and see what they get into. The sun in the sky means they've lost the advantage of darkness. We've been tracking the lions all morning. We just saw them come across right here. Stop, stop. I can see the lions. I can see the lions. The brothers find a new target. Hippos. Well, look, check them out. They're flanking out. They're going to make a go on the hippos right here. They're going to make a go at them. They use the same attack strategy we saw last night. But this time, the alpha male Big and Dada flanks the herd, while Mohawk takes the center position. Coming up, Boone gets into the box for the ultimate test. Oh, oh here we go. Test in the box. In the heart of South Africa, tracking the Nambiti brothers, a coalition of three male lions. 
and along the way, breaking down each stage of a lion's guild to prepare for the ultimate test. The box. Big Cat Tracker Boone Smith will be inches away from wild lions, breaking down their social dynamics. The only thing I'm wondering is, will this box hold if Big and Dot and his brothers show up? Right now, we've followed them to a watering hole. They've crossed paths with an animal responsible for the most human fatalities in Africa. <laughs> Hippos. <laughs> Mohawk launches the attack from the center. Big and Dada and Blondie will flank from the outside. They leave no escape. When those lions locked onto those hippos, it was like flipping a switch. The burst of speed, the acceleration, it was lightning fast how quick they moved. This high-speed pursuit is the second stage of a lion's kill. Hey, Greg, let's step right here. This place is perfect. I'm heading off the reserve to see exactly what I'll be up against when I enter the box. In this controlled environment, we'll reveal one of the abilities that truly make lions king of their domain. Their speed. What we've got here is a high-speed winch, like the ones used to tow wakeboarders. The winch will pull a piece of bait through a clearing, and the lions chase it down. I'll measure the lion's speed with this radar gun, and we'll use slow motion photography to analyze the mechanics of the lion's run, all from the safety of this blind. Since both males and females might show up at the box, we're testing the speed of a four-year-old male and a two-year-old lioness. OK, lines out. That's a big female. Thirty-one miles an hour. That cat is flying. Boom, one big power lunge, and all of a sudden she was at full stride. At the start of a lion's run, the goal is to achieve maximum acceleration. The lioness coils her body into position, like a sprinter on a starting block. Then she uses her hind legs together to spring forward, achieving top speed in a few short bursts. The acceleration is just ridiculous how fast they're from zero to 31. Once she's up to speed, the lioness begins her gallop. There is a circular pattern to her footfalls. The right forepaw is followed by the left. Then the left hind paw is followed by the right. This is known as a rotary gallop, and it's a powerful method for rocketing forward and chasing down prey. It's the same type of gallop used by the lion's distant cousins, the cheetah, the fastest land animal in the world. She's at top speed in about five yards. So the power and the acceleration is what's really amazing on this. Now let's compare the lioness's run with our adult male. A lion this size is what I'll be facing inside the box if Big and Dada or one of his brothers shows up. He's got to be close to 500 pounds. Uh, here we go. Awesome. Big guys are so much heavier, so much more muscle, but yet 29 miles an hour. 
In the wild, the lion's top speed has been clocked at over 45 miles per hour. That's not as fast as a cheetah, but it is faster than a Kentucky Derby thoroughbred. It's obvious that no human can outrun a lion, but after seeing that acceleration in action, it's clear that even the fastest prey doesn't stand a chance if taken by surprise. Back on the reserve, the Nambiti brothers continue their search for Sukazi, a lioness that is new to the area and ready to raise her own lion cubs. While the brothers have spent most of their adult lives together, their primal instincts compel them to breed and start their own prides. The oldest brother, Big and Dada, leads and protects his younger brothers, Mohawk and Blondie. But Sukazi's presence on the reserve might finally break the Nambiti brothers' bond. Along with a local guide, Boone tracks Sukazi and her sister. If he can find her, he can anticipate where the brothers will go next. He sees something. Yeah. And find the ideal place to set up the box. They're on the rocky section there. They're lying there, right next to each other. Boone locates Sukazi and her sister. Their golden yellow coats blend them into the tall grass, the perfect camouflage for stalking prey. And right now, Sukazi's doing what few apex predators do, taking on an animal more than three times her size. One kick from a giraffe's powerful long legs can crush a lion's skull. Sukazi's best chance for success is to strike before the giraffe knows she's there. Now that the giraffe sees her, Sukazi has only two choices, back down or risk a death blow by attacking. See how high we can get these lions to jump. We break down the third stage of the attack. Oh, wow. At the end of the hour, I'll be face to face with wild lions. And the only thing between us will be one inch of acrylic. Deep in the African bush of the Nambiti Game Reserve, we prepare for the ultimate test. Big cat tracker Boone Smith will lock himself inside a box just inches away from wild lions. To see what he's really up against, we're breaking down the stages of a lion's kill, revealing the powers that make them the ultimate predator. Now, we track a lioness named Sukazi as she stalks a giraffe. This herd of adult giraffes outweighs Ukazi by thousands of pounds. She plays it safe and calls off the hunt. Usually, it takes many lions to bring down an animal as big as a giraffe. And to do it, they have to get airborne. This leaping ability is critical to their dominance in the wild. To find out how high a lion can jump and what other threats Boone may encounter while in the box, we head off the reserve again to work with lions in a controlled environment. To get these lions leaping, I'm going to climb up this tree and hang a bait. For the first attempt, 
the bait is set seven feet above the ground. Oh, wow, she's coming in hot. She's right under it. As the lioness reaches the height of her jump, instinctively, her retractable claws extend. In a hunt, this would be the point of contact, penetrating the thick hide of her prey just before she delivers a devastating bite. That was at seven feet, and there was no problem whatsoever. Boom. When a lion jumps, they generate explosive force. This is made possible by fast twitch muscle fibers. These fibers contract very quickly, giving them powerful bursts of energy. <laughs> the seven foot jump was easy, so we raised the bait to nine feet. At this height, Tsukazi could have easily reached the hindquarters of the giraffe she encountered. All right, so here she comes. Just thinking about it right here. I wanted to see if I can get a little higher when we max this out. swipe out it, but she just barely missed it. She was way up over the bait on that miss. That's enough height to get on the back of any animal she'd encounter in the wild. As our test lion reaches maximum height, her paw swipe clears the bait by 10 inches, making this her best jump, nearly 10 feet. <clears throat> yeah, so she's trying to figure out what to do. Oh, wow. And that's ingenuity there. This whole idea that lions don't climb trees is <laughs> not the case whatsoever. You know, this is a great example of, uh, of what happens in a hunting scenario. It wasn't working like she wanted, so she's adapted on the fly, utilized something else here, the tree, and still ended up with what she wanted, the chunk of meat. So not only powerful, but super intelligent as well. These claw marks are amazing. They're like a quarter inch deep in here. If it's that easy for her to get up this tree, I can't imagine how easy it's going to be for these lions to get up on top of the box. Back on the reserve, we're on the hunt again. We've been tracking these two female lionesses all morning, and they just crossed and disappeared here into the tall grass. Oh, she's killing something right now. She's got a warthog. Coming up, stage four of a lion's hunt. The takedown and kill bite. And later, Boom comes face to face with the Nambiti brothers. Oh, here we go. We're in the heart of South Africa, tracking the Nambiti brothers a coalition of three male lions. They are following a lioness named Sukasi. She's ready for cubs, and the competition to claim her as a mate could disrupt the brothers' alliance. Hey, stop, 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 stop right there. I think I, see, I think I see one, I think I see one. Oh, she's killing something right now. She's got a warthog. That's, I can see the tusks. That's a great big boar. It's got to weigh close to 200 pounds, and she is on him. I can't believe how effortlessly she just picked up that warthog by the throat and was just walking around with it. 
It makes you wonder how strong these cats really are. The true power of the African lion is revealed during the fourth stage of the kill, the takedown. Measuring the strength of a lion will give us a better idea of whether or not the box will hold when Boone's inside. To find out, we will attach bait to the end of a heavy-duty digital scale. When a lion enters and grabs the bait, we'll determine exactly how much he can pull. All right, he's out. Here it comes, guys. So he's got the bait, but he's not really pulling on it. So I'm going to give him a little fight back right here and see if I can get him to really lean on it. Look out, 1,500 pounds right there on just that. The secret behind a lion's incredible strength is revealed in their muscle anatomy. Compared to a human's, a lion's muscle fibers can be half the size, allowing them to pack in more per square inch. And not only can the density be higher, each fiber is 2.6 times more powerful. If this lone male can pull 1,500 pounds, what could the combined power of the Nambiti brothers do to the box? The strength that these guys have with the, the, the muscle structure plus the, the fiber strength is it's just mind-boggling. Lions use their incredible strength to take down prey that can be more than three times their size. But ultimately, the killing blow is delivered with a bite. They use their powerful jaws to clamp down on their prey's throat, crushing the trachea and suffocating them to death. Back on the reserve, we're hot on the trail of Big and Dada. He's been following Sukazi for hours, and it seems as though she's playing hard to get. Hey, I got something right here. I'm going through the grass right here off the right side. Hey, this is it. This is the line. It's the line. We got a line right here. Right here on our three o'clock. Devin, get a light on it. It's Sukazi, and she's acting cautious. She spots Big and Dada and heads in his direction. Sukazi turns away. But Big and Dada isn't giving up. So these guys are definitely getting up and starting to go on the move right now. While Big and Dada courts Sukazi, his younger brothers Mohawk and Blondie watch from afar. Sukazi accepts Big and Dada by raising her tail, a sign of submission. But now, Mohawk approaches. Big and Dada will not stand for the presence of a second male, even if it's his brother. 
the bond between these three dominant predators is about to be put to the test. About to get intense, get ready. Oh, they, they're locked up. Seriously, they are locked up. Coming up. The power struggle between the brothers intensifies oh. as Boom finally enters the box. We're in South Africa, tracking the Nambidi brothers, a coalition of male lions that are following a lioness named Sukazi. Last night, Things got intense when all four cats crossed paths. Holy cow. Now, a new day brings a new alliance. Big and daughter remains by Sukazi's side. For now, he's left his younger brothers, Mohawk and Blondie, to fend for themselves. But tonight, the bond between the brothers will be tested as we reveal the final stage of a lion's kill, the feast. And for that, I prepared something special. A state-of-the-art clear acrylic cage. Nine transparent panels bolted together with marine-grade steel. We machined eight-inch filming ports on each side. And my entry point, a stainless steel grate secured by four quick-release latches. With this box, I'll have my own seat at the dinner table. The box will put me inches away from the lions while they feed. I'll be able to see the most minute facial expressions and literally feel the infrasonic vocalizations between the cats. This test will put their social dynamics under a microscope. I'm gonna bait the area to lure the lions in. And the main course? A fresh wildebeest carcass strapped to the top of the box. So we've just locked ourselves in the box. We know that we've got at least two lions very close to us. And now's kind of the moment of truth. As the sun sets, Boone and his cameraman, Devin, wait for the lions to arrive. I can hear the lions roaring. close, there's a good chance they're gonna come. I'm gonna slide back here in position and hide, and see what happens. I got one. Looks like a female. She's closing the distance. She totally sees us. Wait, wait, wait. You see that? She's not alone. And the big guy, Big and Dada. If Big and Dada is here with Sukazi, his younger brothers can't be far behind. He's coming.
Tsukasi and Big and Dada find the lure bait. In a normal feeding situation with a fresh kill, Big and Dada, the alpha male, would eat first. But with Tsukasi present, something has clearly changed. Brothers position themselves behind the box. Their focus is not on the carcass. They're more curious about what's inside. That was intense, man. Big and Dada and Sukazi emerge from the shadows. and Blondie still hunkered down behind Boone. Yeah, lions all around. All four cats surround the box. At last, the hierarchy amongst the coalition will be revealed. One of the brothers is confronting Sukasi. Yeah, this is nuts. Get ready, it's gonna get wild. gone and all the lions around it's time to serve the main course in a feeding situation like this we'll be able to see exactly how Sukasi's presence affects the social dynamic within the coalition stays by Sukazi's side, not leaving her exposed to his brothers. Just mouthfuls of her rib cage. I mean, just chunks coming out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that is unreal. Freaking awesome. Coming up, the box is tough, but will it stay in one piece? Pushing on it. It's the dead of night on the Nambiti Game Reserve. And we're throwing a very unusual dinner party. Right now, our guests are getting rowdy. Oh, oh we're screwed. Both of them are gonna pull man. Oh. We're getting crushed against the tree here. Uh, Houston. We have a problem. So they're trying to take the kill and move it away. And when they pulled it, the cable hooked on the, the metal brace on the bottom. We're talking over 1,200 pounds and they're just spinning it effortlessly. 
takes position 10 feet behind his brothers. And Sukazi? She's right, she's right behind us, man. This is gonna get interesting. Normally, the dominant male, Big and Dada, would be the first to eat. You're not even letting the female feed. But tonight, his younger brothers, Blondie and Mohawk, claim the kill. Oh my gosh. Oh, he's pissed. Dada must decide, assert his dominance over his brothers, or stay by Sukazi's side. Gandada chooses not to fight. His focus is on the continuation of his bloodline. For now, he lets his brothers dine alone. All the tests we've done have led up to this right here. The feast, the final stage of a lion's kill, where we truly see what makes the African lion unique in the world of big cats. <laughs> They ruled the African plains for one very simple reason. Their social structures. In a pride or a coalition, their unique bonds give them an advantage. From cooperative hunting to protecting each other, they have strength in numbers. This, combined with their incredible physical abilities, makes the African lion reign supreme. 